Hello, this is Reverend Don Lewis coming to you with a Magic TV special report. And uh, the news is out, and it appears uh, that pagan leader and civil rights activist Patrick McCollum has lost his case uh, against the California penal system. The case has been rejected on all counts. Um, of course, there is still the possibility of further appeal, but this is a very serious uh, very serious situation and something that we really need to be extremely aware of. Those of you who are not familiar with what the case is, uh, Patrick McCollum has been suing the state of California over its two-tiered religious system in the California prison system. Uh, that is, California has a policy where certain religions are considered to be covered by civil rights and certain other religions are not. Uh, Judaism, Christianity, Islam and Native American religion are considered to be first-tier religions that have civil rights. Everybody else are second-tier religions and do not. And that has been their position. And Patrick McCollum has been suing them as part of a class action suit uh, for some time now and uh, has been rejected on his, uh, his recent appeal on all counts. Now, what does this mean to us as a community? Well, it is certainly possible that this could be taken to the Supreme Court of the nation uh, and almost certainly will, and that might possibly make a difference, but there's no guarantee that they will hear it. What this means to us in the future is really the question of whether we are first-class citizens or second-class citizens, because that's what first and second tier religion means. Uh, are we equal citizens with our Christian neighbors, our Jewish neighbors, and our Muslim neighbors, or are we not? And this, of course, is part of a, a crisis of identity that the United States has been going through for some time now. Uh, and it's not an accidental one. And, you know, we at Magic TV and uh, Witch School and Telepathic Media have, for the last 20 years, been trying to point out that this is part of an orchestrated campaign uh, from certain Judeo-Christian groups, primarily uh, groups such as the Christian Dominionists, also Apostolic Reconstructionists, same basic principles. Uh, with the intention of basically destroying the country, uh, the United States as a democratic country, and replacing it with a theocracy. Um, and this is not at all an accident or a few tattered remnants of some former system, but is a growing and powerful threat to our future. Something we need to be aware of, and this case really ought to make us aware if nothing else has. We also see, of course, witch hunts in Africa spreading all over, see them now beginning to spread in other parts of the world. And um, in Africa in particular, they are spurred on by the Pentecostal Church. And, you know, I am not exactly saying that, that we should um, look at this as the battle for the soul of the world, but really that's kind of what it is. And, you know, we need to not take this situation for granted. We need to really be aware of what's going on. And we need to look at our alternatives for what we can do uh, to stand up for our own rights. And, you know, it's not something we can do passively. Uh, but there are things we can do. Voting is one of them. Uh, writing our representatives is one of them. Um, peaceful protest is one of them. Uh, and above all, thoughtful strategizing for the future is one of them. We need not to pretend that these people are not there. We need not to pretend that they are not a danger to us. Uh, we are very much, in my opinion, in the same position uh, that many groups were in, in in Germany in the last days of the Weimar Republic. And the real question is, can democracy be saved, or are we facing a dictatorship that's going to be really bad? And if you think that this is alarmist, I really think that you're taking your situation for granted. Now, that doesn't mean it can't be prevented, it doesn't necessarily even mean it's imminent, but on the other hand, think for just a moment about whether you would have said that this decision was a possibility five years ago, or ten years ago. We're not seeing things moving forward in certain segments of society, and we really need to exert ourselves to try to make them move forward again. Uh, the last thing that we need to do is to ignore the danger. Uh, I think that the leaders of our community, myself included, really need to be very aware of this situation and we need to come together. We need to set aside many of our differences, uh, which doesn't mean we don't have differences, but we can, like, stop having a cow about them. Uh, I think the worst thing in the world to do is to have a crisis of identity in our own community at this moment. 
uh, and I would call for everyone to support the idea of pagan as an umbrella term for all of us. And if we cannot stand together at this moment, then we really might as well hang up our robes and stop playing games, because we really are coming down to a point that this is not a game, and it is a question of the future. And I think that as pagans, we need to take it very seriously, and we need to make an effort to get over our differences. We need to make an effort to stop squabbling among ourselves and to take positive, proactive, life-affirming action. I'm certainly not suggesting that we go out and throw Molotov cocktails. I think that'd be a very destructive thing to do. Uh, we shouldn't be writing a bunch of angry letters either. We need to be very reasonable. We be, need to be very calm. We need to be very sensible. But we need to be very aware of what's happening, and we need to take actions of our own. Um, and, you know, the time we really needed to do this was in the 1990s. Uh, we needed to do it because this group, these groups, because they're related, there, there's several related extremist Christian groups that are behind this. And they were gathering their steam then. They've been working on it since the 70s, and it's no secret, they admit it themselves. Uh, their goal is nothing less than the elimination of what we would understand as democratic government. And they're very clear about it. Um, they don't necessarily see it in quite the same terms, but they're very clear about what they're doing. And you need to look no farther than Africa to see what happens when they succeed, because they're succeeding there. And if you look particularly at Nigeria and, and uh, Uganda and certain other countries of Central Africa, you can see what they plan to do. And um, if we don't take it seriously, I think we're being very foolish. So as I say, don't run around like a chicken without a head, but do try to take positive, proactive action. Write to your representatives. Uh, write to the, the, the editorial page of your newspaper, uh, if you still have one. Talk to your friends. Um, and if you can't talk to your friends, uh, talk to people you know online. But it's not enough for us to talk among ourselves. It's not enough for us to look into our community at the moment. We have to look outward at the wider society if we're going to do anything at all. And it really is a question, this case, of whether we are or are not equal citizens. We have been up until now. Uh, we've had many, many occasions when that's been upheld. However, this case could undo all of that very easily. And, you know, do not think that this is a momentary fly in the ointment, it could be much more serious than that. But the one thing we must not do is not react at all. We must not ignore it and we must not think it's nothing because it's a very important situation. So that's my special report on the subject and of course the, 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 the case, though rejected at this moment, uh, does have certain possibilities for the future, but we have no guarantee that those possibilities uh, are going to go in our favor either. And we really need to be looking at not how to win this one case in the court, but how to make our case in the wider society. And if we can't do that, well, then there's nothing really for us to do. So, those are my thoughts on that, and until next time, may you blessed be.